Hello and welcome to the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear Review Podcast. This is episode 159. On this show, we showcase gun reviews, gear, and anything else a gun enthusiast may be looking for. We strive to evaluate products from an unbiased and honest perspective. I'm your host, Ryan Cross, from the Firearms Review Network, your source for broadcast for shooters, hunters, and gun enthusiasts. Uh, it's a wonderful week. Uh, we've got, we might uh, have to rewrite that. There's a lot of grammatical errors in there. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Now yeah, you think it's grammatical error. <laughs> yeah. I give you a little responsibility, and this is what I get back. Yeah. I'll well, take his word for it. I'll take so his word got... for it because I don't speak grammatical. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got Chad, Tony, and Rob, and the mustache himself, Sean Fisher. Thank you. And uh, we've got actually a. Um, a very exciting show because there's some AR-15 furniture that I've been wanting to talk about for about a couple weeks, and I tried to delay talking about it until I saw some more details, and uh, finally got MSRPs for this stuff, so I can we can talk a little bit more in detail about it. Uh, but before that, Chad's got a review, a uh, strike or a Stierka? How do you pronounce that? It's Stierka. 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 Okay. You know, like a like a cow, a steer, and then a cut. Well, I'm not from Texas, so I don't know anything about steers. <laughs> wow. I don't think Ryan realizes how bad he just messed up. Uh, pretty that's, much. That's what I was yeah. thinking, too. Nope, he just likes Iron Maiden. <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't we need announcements first, though, and all kinds of other stuff, Ryan? All right, let's stop picking on Ryan long enough for him to finish yeah, the intro. Come on. You, usually, I let you guys talk about what you did in Guns this week, but I think at this point, I don't care now. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll start with Rob. What did you do in guns this week, man? And I had a great week in guns. I found out that, you know, the election last week, and then I sold my house, and so now I'm officially homeless for the first time in almost 20 years. And when I was Yay. driving, yeah, when I was driving to, uh, I just thought I'm going to have to do something with Bridget. <laughs> anyway. It's cool. You're officially creepy homeless guy. <laughs> I just need to get a a, a kind of line van or something. Oh, but okay, no, yeah, I, great. I was driving to hang out with some relatives over the weekend. I got a call from uh, the National Firearms Freedom Alliance, uh, Todd. He called me up and said I won their raffle for a SBRAK and a dead air silencer. Nice. And I'm still in awe about that one. Awesome. I couldn't have one ticket lottery. Yeah, now I won this AR or uh, AK and a. Uh, and a silencer combo, so I'm stoked about that. Then we went out shooting, took my uh, new Ruger Precision Rifle to the range, and that was a nice rifle to shoot. And I'm mar- married that up to a uh, ATN 5 to 20, uh, their new night vision scope, the Gen 2. And that's a pretty neat scope. So, yeah, I've had a great weekend guns. Nice. Yeah. I, awesome. I hated you a little bit before, but now you just pushed me over the edge with that news, man. I'm super jealous. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, it and must we're supposed to follow Ryan. this up. See, unlike Ryan, I, I, I don't hate you any more or any less than I did before. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just hate my guts, Tony. Hey, listen. I hate everybody who lives in a free state. I'm stuck here behind the wall. They already built it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Trump's not supposed to do that until January. How'd they finish the wall when they're not even going over that bridge yet? <laughs> that that wall wasn't Trump. That was Loretta Weinberg. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, our freedoms are shut down in this state, and we're just eking out whatever we can and whatever <laughs> joy we can get out of firearms here. All right, Sean, did you do anything interesting? Absolutely not. I don't care what Tony says. <laughs> <laughs> We had an awesome weekend. It, we, well, not, not as good as Rob's, apparently, but we had a pretty better weekend. We did the uh, – our good friends Stuart, Jep, and uh, Sandra Muldoon were doing their intro to IDPA class on Saturday. We took that. Um, Tony shot really well. I personally brought the thunder, <laughs> which makes it sound really cool until I explain that, you know, thunder is loud and frightening, doesn't really do any damage. <laughs> oh yeah I, uh, well, I decided I thought you were gonna say you brought a burst of thunder but no no no, no. I, I I decided to run the the third stage just as fast as I possibly could and posted a really impressive time 
right up until they started scoring targets and penalized me like over 16 minutes. (laughs) 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 So balance, speed, and accuracy was the lesson there, fellas. And then we did a, a, a shotgun course on Sunday, which was also really good until Tony had a little problem. I'll let him talk about that. So I had a banner week. Um, it was uh, Marine Corps birthday, Veterans Day. Friday, I went and purchased a 12-gauge Eastern Arms single-shot shotgun that I'm going to use as a, a <clears throat> baseline for a defensive shotgun build I'm doing. Uh, we, had the cl- we had the class on Saturday, which was awesome. Took my Glock 19 and a Blackhawk holster and had a lot of fun. Sunday, we had the defensive shotgun class, and... Um, I decided to take my single shot Eastern arms out and try it out. We were throwing some clays and I was able to bang out two of them, right? Boom, boom, no problem. Went to shoot the third one and the trigger guard came off the shotgun. As I loaded the round in and cocked the hammer, so I placed my finger on the trigger guard, of course, keeping it out of the trigger until you're ready to shoot cocked the hammer and was in the course of bringing it up to my shoulder when the trigger guard fell off and I hit the trigger. So, of course, it was pointing in a safe direction and it recoiled before it ever got to my shoulder, cut my finger, and I was bleeding all over the place on my new shotgun. Not cool at all. <clears throat> so, we couldn't find the screw that held the trigger guard in place, so I have to get another one of those. But other than that, lesson learned, you know, try your shotgun out on your own time. Don't do it in front of students. <laughs> and uh, check and see if every screw is tight on a shotgun before you take it out and shoot it. Those are the two lessons I picked up from that one. Yeah, the lesson on used guns is to go over it with a fine-tooth comb. But teachable moment, Tony was following all the safe rules, and that's what kept it from being a, you know, kept it as a minor accident instead of something really, really problematic. But good teachable moment. Uh, no, I don't think anybody even got startled by it because it was kind of like everybody just thought you shot early at first and then went, wait, you cut your thumb? How'd that happen? So, oh yeah, about as, as good a mishap as you could possibly have. Yeah, I mean, it's not even, it was the shock. Um, it was pretty funny though because one of the safety things we continually go over uh, is about having a accidental or negligent discharge to put the firearm down immediately. And Sean's looking at me, and I'm sitting there with this Keanu Puzzled Reeves look on his look, face. Yeah, this Keanu Reeves look on my face, like I'm on in in the movie Speed, and I'm like, uh, sounds like put the firearm down. I'm like, dude, it's a single shot. We're cool, but let me put this firearm down. <laughs> <laughs> I can't accidentally fire a single shot again. It was a teachable moment. A uh, little bit of blood, and. Uh, I'll just find a screw for that, get it together, and um, I'll probably enjoy cutting the barrel down <laughs> a little more than I should. <laughs> cool. Uh, let's see. Did I miss anybody? You, you missed me. You had Rob. Oh, yeah, oh, you got Rob. I got yeah, Rob. You got me and my... Uh, We're supposed to follow you. Rob up. But yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. let's see. I made it to the range and chronographed some ammo and that was about all I did. So, see, boring. Great story, bro. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yep. Uh, Can you tell the part about uh again? <laughs> yeah. There was this guy there with a single shot shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> he blow his finger off, too. <laughs> Almost. Uh, well, I didn't do anything really either. I've just been pumping out stuff for Patriot Patch Co. so that we got some new things in the catalog for Christmas, which is a Sorry. great segue into the announcements. Uh, so bandwidth sponsor is Patriot Patch Co. Um, I've got a new patch I just added on to the pre-order page last night, and this is a participation trophy morale patch. Um, so it's a trophy. It says, better luck next time. And then uh, down at the engraving plate, it says, you tried. <laughs> so this is the perfect patch uh, for you to wear in case you encounter anyone who's a sore loser or is upset about the recent election. Uh, you can just point to the patch and go, do you need a trophy? Do you need a participation trophy to feel like a winner? And uh, I'm sure that will solve everything. <laughs> I'm not responsible for you getting punched, but 
Yeah, they'll they'll get out from in front of your car and let you through at that point and be like, yeah, we've we've totally been unreasonable in this whole thing. So exactly, exactly. can only end well. They'll go home and go back to their uh, their morning shift at Starbucks or McDonald's. <laughs> <clears throat> so that's for pre order right now. We've also got uh, I'm actually wearing it, new T shirts. So this is a charcoal version of our come and take it with the AR fifteen. Um, but if I kind of flex my arm here a little bit, you'll see that it actually has a patch panel on the left sleeve. So I've got the uh, the brand new Dangerous to Go Alone sniper patch. Just got that in t uh, yesterday. So Woo that looks very nice. I also just got the November uh, patch, uh, patch of the month patches in. So I got the smoke grenade, the M18 pumpkin spice smoke grenade, and I've also got the turkey holding a FN scar Pretty badass turkey. So Anything these are a, a scar is badass. Yeah, I agree. I got, I got, I was like, you know what? He, I was gonna put an AR-15, and I was like, I haven't done anything with the scar. I, I think I really should. So I'm glad to mix it up a little bit. Um, so those are shipping. If you're in the patch of the month club, then those should be on their way to you. And next week we will announce the December patch of the month. Um, so if you're a fan of suppressors and Santa Claus, uh, stay tuned for that. Um, I also just finished the 1911 cleaning mat, but that's not on the website yet. Um, but that should be here in the next few weeks. Um, so moving on from Patriot Patch Co., we've got a new listener support program on the Firearms Radio Network. So if you go to firearmsradio.tv and go to the pledge page, uh, you can pledge any kind of support in a monetary amount to this podcast or any of your other favorite podcasts on the network. Uh, if you pledge money to this podcast, that goes directly into obtaining new gear to review. Um, so there's that. And then we've got a, uh, for Black Bag Resources, we've got a new coupon code, Ryan's Roll Pin, for $10 off any order over $50 site-wide. And that's good till Friday, December the 10th. <clears throat> and we've also got, uh, I want to promote uh, John Patton's The Gun Collective uh, swag shop. So tgcgear.com or store.theguncollective.com. Uh, so he's got some exclusive uh, patches and shirts and hoodies and long sleeve shirts and keychains that Patriot Patch is fulfilling and designing for him. And every $5 you spend uh, gives you an entry into a contest to win a very nice, expensive rifle, about $3,000 worth. And then a hundred and fifty or one thousand five hundred dollar value hunting trip with uh, John. So, uh, if you any money you spend on that buying Christmas gifts for your friends or your family, that is really just a sel selfish, underhanded way of getting you a chance to win a really awesome gun and a hunting trip. So, make sure you fill everyone's stockings this year. And that said, usually we at the end we plug it, but. Uh, Send some uh, stuffed Tony's away using the uh, what's that promo code for for Tony? Simon says train. Simon says train. So if you shop on Black Bag Resources website, I kind of screwed up the order here. I need to put that in the announcements right after your uh, your coupon code. Um, but basically, you shop and you use the Simon Says Train coupon code. It's free shipping because Sean's just going to hand that stuff over to Tony, and he can give it away during his uh, second is for everyone diversity shoots raffles and giveaways and prize tables. Yeah. So, so any help will be appreciated, especially if you're going to give money, please. <laughs> I'm not telling you to get it in before black Friday, but it will really help to, because that's either black Friday or cyber Monday, because that's when I pretty much nail almost every sale I can to get stuff to donate throughout the year. I try to make every dollar count. And I try to squeeze that buffalo nickel till it poops itself. So that's pretty much what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> so if you can help me out, cool. If you want to pick up gear during Black Friday and send it, that'll be great. Um, but if you want to contact Black Bag, I know he's got some cool stuff uh, that he can send. And everybody will really appreciate it. Because, again, it's $5 raffles. So give anything you think would be cool for you to win in a $5 raffle. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so if it's t-shirts, hats, what survival gear, or knives, anything that you, you appreciate. You don't have to break the bank. I know people have bills, but anything can help. Because in Jersey, we got a problem coming up in 2017. But I'll talk about that at the end of the show. Sweet. 
And if you've got any roll pins or AR-15 pistol grips, A2 only. Send those over to Tony <laughs> as well. He doesn't want any of your Magpul or your Bravo company. It's got to be A2 pistol grips and whatever uh, shape or don't form. Send, don't send the Hogue or the Ergo. None uh, of the no, uh, great. Great. none of the fancy adjustable hex mag. No, no. APGs. Just, standard A yeah. two pistol grips only. A two pistol grips and and A two four ends. Hand yes. guards. Yeah, yeah. Stuff that everybody wants. <laughs> and if they're higher, if they're high mileage, the better. Oh yeah, and 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 just standard GI slings. <laughs> awesome. And Uncle Mike's holsters. <laughs> Sweet, I got like a bag full of those for you. I will punch you dead in your eye. I will punch you in your eye. Whatever, put it on YouTube. <laughs> Sweet. So we breezed through the announcements. Now we're going to get on to the uh, the main topic, the product review. So, Chad, take it away. Oh, I get to take it away. Well, tonight we have the Stierka S7 2.5 to 15 rifle scope so i will kind of show you the picture of it while it's still on the rifle because i didn't want to go out to the garage and get stuff to take it off so you get the rifle and all tonight uh i hadn't actually heard of stierka till heck like three months ago and so you know in the chad fashion i sent them an email and they decided to be nice and send me this rifle scope and also one of their red dots, which I will review at a later date. So when I first received it, uh, I noticed it's got a pretty fancy box, you know, typical scope in the box battery because it is an illuminated reticle scope. And let me set this rifle down because it's better that way. It comes with a neoprene cover, which is kind of nice. And a lens cleaning cloth with a little clip, the kind you can clean your glasses with when, you know, if you wear some, uh, which is nice because it's the little stowaway kind that you actually can do something with. So there's that. Uh, it uses a standard CR2032 battery. Uh, so that's standard. Uh, the battery goes in this end here which is also the adjustment for your, it turns your illumination on and off, and it is also your parallax adjustment. So there's that. Uh, I mounted it on this nice Savage I have that I reviewed the modular driven technologies stock for, so it's a pretty stable platform. Uh, I noticed the scope has really clear glass for the price range, which we'll get into later. Uh, they Stierka says that the, it has blackened edges around the lenses to reduce glare and enhance image contrast, which by looking through it, you can kind of tell it doesn't really have some of the kind of little, little teeny bit of fuzz around it like some of the others do. It doesn't have that. So the images, whatever you're looking at, comes through clear. Uh, so all I can do is say it works as advertised. <laughs> uh, the S7 series, which this is, is their top of the line scope for now. It has what they call an SXL Max optics coating, you know, the normal. Reduce glare, add light and color transmission, and to help with optimum clarity. Uh, I did use this in low light and supporting down rain, uh, and it still was quite clear, which was nice. Uh, it remained clear out to about 400 yards, which is as far as I could test it with what I was doing. There's a not so good picture of a tree in the reticle on the review. So you can kind of look at that and kind of get an idea. Uh, it was taken with my phone, so that kind of made it not so great, but you kind of get the idea. Uh, so that's good as you know it's waterproof fog proof uh, i think they say 30 minutes at a meter or something for the waterproof which is pretty good i mean you're not usually going to stick it in water and let it sit there in the creek or something uh this particular model has an illuminated mill dot reticle which 
you know, is your standard typical red offered by just about everybody. Uh, they also offer this scope in an illuminated duplex reticle in the two and a half to 15, and then a non illuminated BDC reticle. Uh, why it's not illuminated, I couldn't tell you, but maybe that's in the future. I don't know. Uh, pretty much the illumination is really nice on this scope. It's visible in pretty much any light except, you know, direct bright sunlight. Uh, even if it's just a little bit cloudy and still pretty sunny, you can still see the illumination. Uh, it has six brightness settings for the illumination. Uh, I don't know if you can see it in this picture, but it has an off between each position. So between the one and six, there's a zero position in each one that is an off position. So that's nice. Uh, that comes in quite handy. Uh, it, Like I said, it is on the end of the parallax adjustment. Uh, so it's a little wider. It sticks out a little more than if it were like up, up top here on the scope or something, but it's kind of nice that way. But I did notice that I w when I was shooting it once, I went to adjust the parallax adjustment and I turned the illumination off. So that's kind of something to note. Uh, it's got turret caps, which are come off and then you have nice click style adjustment kind of you know turret style but not tall uh, there's a coin slot in the top so that you can loosen it take the cap off and reset it to the little zero position so you know where you're at uh, which is nice uh, didn't take much to do that either uh, the turret clicks are pretty crisp uh, which is another nice feature and I'll screw that back on uh, so for some people this particular style of scope is pretty long which I don't know if they can really do much about that because going from two and a half to 15 is a pretty pretty big optical zoom or whatever you want to call it and so there's you know it if you're putting it on like an ar or something it might look a little long or be a little long but on like a bold action rifle it's nothing to worry about uh this particular scope is a second focal plane so it is not a first focal plane which i was kind of hoping for uh there are but you know, not everybody likes first focal planes. Some do, some don't. Uh, but all else, I like the range of the scope because at two and a half, you know, here, like if you're using it for hunting, two and a half in a lot of the brush we have around here is, you know, nice because you can take close shots and not have to really worry about not being able to find your target. Uh, and at 15, you know, if you're out, somewhere with longer shots for a hunting scope, you know, that's, that's a good amount of magnification. So I'm, you know, all in all, I'm glad they let, sent this to me to try out. It's extremely clear, easy to adjust. It does have a lifetime warranty. And one of the nice things about their lifetime warranty, which is you can send it back every year and they'll give it a free tune up. If anything needs updated or cleaned or anything like that, they'll, do that for you for free so there is that and now we'll move on to the firearms insider eight key points claim to fame hunting scope illuminated mill dot reticle pretty standard target market i would go with hunters and target shooters uh features and benefits it has that x sxl max optics it is a 30 millimeter tube uh, side focus, parallax adjustment, illuminated reticle, blackened lens edges, 100% waterproof, you know, nitrogen purged, fast focus eyepiece on the back for, you know, adjusting to everybody's eyes. Uh, it is a 50 millimeter objective lens. 
Uh, it has 3.94 inches of eye relief, and it didn't really seem to be that, you know, what specific on where you have to put it when you zoom in and out. So that's it's pretty nice that way. It does weigh 23.7 ounces, ounces. So you know, as is with most scopes, it's not super light, but not super heavy. It is like 13.7 inches long and like 3.1 inches wide because of this magnification slash uh, illuminated reticle and 2.37 inches high and it has a lifetime warranty and the other options we kind of went over you can get the illuminated plex reticle or the ballistic drop reticle we'll skip over that part the msrp on this is 814.95 and here's what I thought was kind of strange on it. Uh, but even at Stierka themselves, they have Shop Stierka, which is the site where you buy stuff from them. It's $679. And then it's $679 on Amazon. So if you need it now, those are your two options, Stierka or Amazon. Uh, I mean, I'm sure they have dealers. So maybe your local store might have it. Uh, so our rating, the pros, extremely clear for the price. Uh, the precise turret clicks, uh, the reset to zero turrets. Uh, does have turret caps, which for a hunting scope you probably want. The illuminated reticle is nice. Uh, the offsetting between each illumination setting is really nice. Uh, and then the neoprene covers included, which is a good little extra. Uh, and the warranty that you can set it back on. The cons, well, it's a second focal plane, so, you know, in this price range, you may be able to get a first focal plane, but I'm guessing probably won't be as clear. The parallax and brightness knobs stick out pretty far. That's a con for me. Uh, it has pretty poor battery life. Uh, I accidentally left it on number four position, and within a month, it was completely dead. And then the length of the scope is almost 14 inches. So depending on what you're putting it on, that may matter. So for a score, I gave it eight of great. Sweet. It seems pretty solid. <clears throat> yeah, it is. Uh, I have a, I don't put this in reviews, but I do on these optics, I'll tap on them with a rubber mallet I have, which always you know just to see if they like fall apart or something and i i don't like beat on them but you know tap on them enough that kind of send some vibration through them to see if something will happen like that yeah yeah do you also do uh like test the tracking like uh put like some kind of ruler I, or yard yard stick out there and see if moving up or i down. do i do i s set it on you know mounted in a of you know just setting there and then side it in and then move it you know left right you know i can't i usually just use like a 24 by 36 targets that i have and i turn them around so it's just the white mm -hmm. and you know mark out a few spots like a foot and stuff and you know it's close enough by my eyes uh i don't you know, so they track good, but, you know, for some people, they'll actually mark out the one MOA and actually see if they can see a difference and stuff. But I don't think my vision's that good. But as far as the tracking goes, you know, I always tend to run them out all the way, the left and right, and then bring it back to zero also. Yeah. Uh, but just to see, because some of your cheap scopes, if you run them out to the ends, I don't know. They stop working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, so, <clears throat> you had six brightness settings. Yes. And an off switch between every brightness setting, and somehow you still <laughs> left it on. By yes. Accident. Yes. <laughs> yes. It, it can happen. <laughs> <laughs> you had six chances to turn it off. <laughs> hey, it, it, it was a good test for the battery. Okay. Yeah, he, was it it, he, wasn't, he didn't forget to leave it off. He intentionally left it off. 
Oh, okay, okay, cool. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> actually, actually, but he can take the twenty thirty two battery out of the last scope he reviewed and put it in this one and get it up and running again. <laughs> oh, geez, I got five or six batteries. I put another battery in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, Chad, <clears throat> if you ever go to Vegas, don't play roulette. <laughs> nice, because yeah. it's like you bet on black and it came up red. Yep, twenty three yeah. times in a row. Vice versa. <laughs> yeah. Well, if if we go to Vegas, make sure Rob's with us because by the sounds of it, we mm-hmm. want him to play the games. Yes. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people are gonna be rubbing <laughs> Rob like Buddha. <laughs> yeah, just make sure it's not doing shot show because that's also the same week as the porn convention, and we don't want to lose him to to <laughs> yeah, He'll never be a shot show. All right, <laughs> no, all right. Going one it big in. For me, that's Bridget. All right, yeah. serious anyway. question for you, Chad. Yes. Um, price point, this, this is kind of similar to a lot of the offerings from Vortex. Vortex if you were to put these sense. side by side, what do you think? Do you like one better? You know, Are they about on par with each other? They're about on par with each other. Uh, this one seems a little bit clearer. Uh, okay. But, you know, it kind of depends because... You know, I used to have uh, one of the Bushnell, it's, you know, Bausch and Lom is what it actually was, but they changed. So now they're all Bushnell. Mm-hmm. That was in this price range a few years ago, and I ended up selling it because I didn't need it anymore. And, you know, it was it was probably on par with that. Uh, that was probably the clearest scope that I had in my collection. And after using this one, I'm trying to remember, but it was, I'd say this is a little clearer. Yeah, that was my question too. Now, uh, a thing I didn't hear about was their warranty. I know Vortex has the VIP warranty. What's going on with theirs? They, you know, it's a lifetime warranty. You can send it in the once a year and have it looked at and done. You know, they'll go through it and, look at it and clean it up and stuff like that. Uh, I didn't see anywhere where it was, you know, a kind of like vortex where you drive over it and they'll replace it. Uh, But, you know, they, they might because they have a, they have a lot of stuff on their site, you know, honesty in optics. They have this little thing on there that kind of describes all their, all their features and, So, you know, it wouldn't surprise me. Oh, you know, they also have their own ballistic app if you're using their bullet drop compensator scopes. Is that too? That's free. It's kind of cool. It doesn't work with the mill dots or I downloaded it to try it out, but it doesn't work with the mill dots or the duplex. It's just for their BDC ones. Uh, So... Well, it's, it, it says it's kind of like the Nikon one, right? Was, what was that, Rob? It's kind of like the Nikon app where you can plug in your uh, yes the the Range cartridge you're using and, yeah. and all that stuff, and it'll give you the holdovers. Yeah, uh, according to their warranty on their site, you know, it says it's more than a warranty. Not only will it take care of your Steerka product, if you ever have a problem, we'll take care of it for you, even if you don't. That's where they go into talking about every year you can send it back. Nice. So, you know, I don't haven't heard of anybody, you know, destroying one and sending it back to sea. Uh, but by the sounds of it, you know, it says in the event of damage or malfunction, they'll replace it or repair it. So who really knows? But, you know, I think anymore, I think to be competitive with Vortex, you pretty much almost have to do it, something like that. Mm. Cool. Yeah, so, Vortex pretty much made every company raise their game up. Yes, I believe yep. so. Uh, the other th- one thing I noticed cool, which is completely off the subject, is with Stierka is, if I remember right, they made a they make a, one of their series. I think they make a bullet drop compensator rimfire. 
just you know n not tons of places do that so yeah i think only I bsa that, yeah. that i know about does that right yeah uh so yeah but that was kind of it's a two to seven i guess but i thought that was kind of cool that somebody actually does that besides BSA. Those guys. Yeah sweet, yeah. sweet 22, I think it's called, or something like that. Yeah, it's something like that. But okay. I guess we can go on to our talking about cool stocks or something. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, I've been, uh, I've been wanting to talk about these for a while because uh, they're not available yet, but I have a feeling as soon as they're available for pre order, they're going to like, and within a couple hours, sell out. Uh, it's kind of like a similar situation to when. Um, uh, Red Jacket, you know, before all those nefarious uh, things came out about the owner, but when they came out with that ZK22 stock for your 1022 that made it look like a uh, like a PDW. It had never that, been done before. Never been done never. before. Well, as goofy as that looked to a lot of people, more traditionalists, it sold like hotcakes and everyone and their, their grandma wanted one for their 1022. So we're kind of coming up on another similar sim situation. This is from Hera Arms. And I believe they're out of Germany, but they're actually working with a U.S. company called Landworld. And that company, Landworld, they actually help produce products specifically for California compliance. Um, all those weird gun laws where, you, hey, you can't have this without this, uh, thumbhole stocks, no pistol grips, uh, yada, yada. Well, this kind of started out as a way of, hey, how can we make a really nice AR or AR-15 butt stock that integrates in with the pistol grip, almost like a thumb hole. But now that that I isn't that thumb hole thing? Didn't they try and write that out too? Where thumb hole stocks were a no go because they're, I know they're working on versions that are Cal specifically California compliant, where there's a basically a wall of aluminum, like a panel that basically prevents your thumb from going inside the hole. And using yeah. the grip like a pistol grip, um, but when you yeah, take that thing, that. yeah. So when you take that thing out, though, it looks like a bullpup stock. It, I mean, it's very reminiscent of the FN uh, P90 or PS90. Um, but you can put this onto your AR15. Looks like it makes use of you know the same screw for your your uh, pistol grip, and then obviously your buffer tube. Um, it looks Magpul. Esque with the uh, their um, precision rifle PRS stocks, um, but it's a very sci-fi looking addition to your rifle. And they they even also have a foregrip um, that kind of also follows that same uh, design features. So it kind of makes your AR-15 look like a futuristic bullpup type weapon, except there is it's not really a bullpup because it doesn't change the location of the action or the magazine well. Um, so everything functions the same. It's just a little bit of a uh, a physical, you know, dressing it up. So we're going to start off talking about the stock first, and then we're going to talk about the uh, the grip. Um, so the stock, actually, they just announced the MSRPs like last week. So that's why I was kind of waiting to talk about it on the show because I wanted more details. So the stock, I was really surprised that they weren't asking more money for this because like i said it's going to sell like hotcakes uh 119 dollars um for the regular version and then for the california version which like i said has that like partition plate that that prevents your thumb from wrapping around the pistol grip itself that's 124 dollars um they don't have anything up on websites right now uh, but the firearm blog has a couple articles that I linked to in the show notes, and that that's what we're going to be referring to for information today. Uh, so thanks over to the guys at the firearm blog for doing the legwork on this. Um, have you guys gotten to take a look at it? It's been all over Facebook. I don't know how, if you haven't seen it. Um, you're probably hiding in a cave in Afghanistan. It's, it's okay. <laughs> Trump Trump won. You can come out yeah. of your cave now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Um, but the, the picture I kept seeing is, is the first one you put here in the show notes. That's a very different design than what looks like is going into production with more of that, that, as you described, a kind of a magpul look to it. Personally, the, the photo that shows the two, uh, just the lowers with the stock mounted on it. I like that style a little bit better. Oh yeah, you're right. I did grab the wrong photo actually. 
Is yeah, it? I'm not sure where, yeah, I'm not sure where I got that. I've got a better photo here. That's I can drop a in different there. manufacturer under my. It's my it's understanding. Like All right, the, is the it? picture that you're going to swap out. Stand by. We're just going to pretend okay. I didn't make that mistake. Okay. You know, I yeah. did. I did just hear something when when Ryan said it looks like a Magpul stock. That's why we're we're reviewing this is because it looks like one of his favorite Magpul stocks. Oh yeah, right. that was an easy leap. I mean, everybody yeah. hooked up on that, but good job, yeah. Captain Obvious. Yeah. Well, <laughs> regardless of the manufacturer, I mean, it's it's futuristic. It's gonna get a lot of people more into. Hey, I bought this, you know, Springfield Saint or Bone Stock AR15, and uh, I'm already bored with the looks of it, and I and I want to <laughs> dress it up a little bit. This is a very possible route for you to take. So I just replaced the photo in the show notes. So you guys can see we're all talking about the same thing now. It's the CQR, and I'm not sure what that uh, acronym stands for. I, w Probably I, w I, I want California to talk about something. the other picture. No. <laughs> the cool-looking no. one. Yeah. yeah. That must, that must have been a, I'm kind a of prototype. A yeah. that, and that's yeah. what I'm thinking. It, either it's a different manufacturer or it was a prototype, and, and this is the production unit. But Okay, I'll talk maybe, about this one. <laughs> maybe we'll do a little more homework and find the other one for next week if it is a, a different manufacturer altogether. But yep. similar concepts, and I think this is, again, with states like New Jersey, where yeah. you're limited in how many evil features you can have on your semi-automatic rifle, this may alleviate one of those features and allow you to have something that you couldn't have otherwise, bayonet lug, flash hide, or whatever, flash because hide. you had to compromise um, on one of those other items because you had that quote-unquote conspicuous pistol grip under the assault weapons laws. Um, so we'll, we'll see how this is subject to those interpretations, but I think that could open up, uh, a lot of options for folks in restrictive States. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I think the great part is now I don't, <clears throat> you can do a build, you can get your lower in, you can put this on it and then you can just order a complete upper from any manufacturer and don't have to worry about the muzzle device that comes with it. I mean, it's just something cool that you just don't have to think about anymore. It, it, it opens up more options for many people in what California has like 7.8 million gun owners. New Jersey has a million. I mean, it's really just on those two States alone worth doing, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, yeah. But the I way they vote, you wouldn't know it. <laughs> yeah. Well, <clears throat> yeah. Hey, voting is one thing. Buying guns is another. <laughs> uh, I was yeah. going to say the other nice thing about these, these states like California and New Jersey is, is it looks like, you know, like the Magpul stock, the PRS stock, it has spacers for the butt plate. Uh, so even though it's not technically probably adjustable, like your standard stock, you can still add spacers or take them out for, you know, shorter people or taller people or something. So, you yeah, know, like, that right length of pull. Yeah. Your length of pull. And, you know, most people can shoot, shoot a shorter length of pull. So you run it down as short as possible. And then, it, you know, like for Tony or somebody, you know, when they're loaning stuff out, it could make it so that more people are like, hey, this is kind of nice. Yeah. Oh, that is the only reason that I would want it, uh, the ability to adjust a buttstock. When you have a class of everyone from, what, a 10-year-old girl to, like, a 65-year-old man, I mean, <clears throat> you have different body types. And to have the ability to change the length of pull is just – it just makes sense. And it, it guarantees – or at least it helps them out, you know what I mean, when it comes to uh, being comfortable with a firearm. It's just ridiculous that it has to come to – let me go ahead and act as if some of these politicians loopholes or go arounds like these to actually be able to still use your dang rifle. Yep. So they do have a couple designing the product to ensure compliance with the regulation. Yeah, it's not a loophole yeah. at all. Yeah. No, we're designing a product to ensure compliance with the regulation. <clears throat> So the nice thing is there's a couple photos from the manufacturer that show uh, and on a looks like a maybe an 18 or, yeah, that, or maybe that's a 16 inch barrel just an elongated forend, um, but basically showing it on a standard rifle build for if you're going to use it on the bench for you know longer range kind of stuff, um, and then they also show it on a SBR with that uh, that foregrip we're going to talk about in a little bit 
Um, and it that that SBR just looks really sexy, and I want to see how it feels. I want to I want to put it in my hands, take it to the range, and see if it actually feels ergonomic, and whether it's like oh my gosh, this is a breakthrough, or whether it's wow, this thing is you know whether it's too heavy because all the extra bulk, or whether it's just entirely unnecessary because let's face it, we've seen some plastic things people bolt on their AR-15s that actually just are too too much bulk and, and don't really you know build a better mousetrap it doesn't help the rifle in any kind of way it's just kind of for you know fun and to show your friends and to be a little special little snowflake but i think there actually might be uh some some cool builds out there i was reading somebody's comments on facebook them wanting to take an ar57 rifle and use this stock and forend on it and build a Frankenstein P90 kind of rifle where it actually uses that 5.7 caliber and the, the P90 magazines up top and then the brass just ejects out the uh, the magazine well. Um, that would be a pretty cool little SBR build, but on a standard length, 16-inch uh, or longer barrel, um, I don't think that forend's really going to be all that great. It's got an integrated uh, hand stop on it, but it looks like a little too much. Somebody played Halo really late one night and was almost too inspired by it. You know but what, though? It, it's the same thing with, like, the P90 or PS90. Those grips kind of look weird, but if you shoot one, you go, yeah, I don't hate this. Not, yeah, not by any stretch. Um, there, there's, there's, And this thing is loaded with sling attachment points was the other thing I looked at. They give you every sling option you could possibly imagine <laughs> from QD mounts to one at the base of the pistol grip, uh, standard like A2 sling points. There, there's all kinds of stuff on here. And it looks like there's a QD mount on that forearm too that you've got any number of options how to hook this thing up and, and run it tight or run it loose. It's, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, and then when you look at pretty much the only like the few options that you have, like the Thornton Customs FRS fifteen, that stock just looks compared to this like a bad Erector set. I mean, it's just horrible. I fired one of those before, and you have to figure out how to get your hand into wherever the pistol grip is supposed to be. I mean, this is pretty intuitive looking and looks way cool. The other thing looks just like a bad project. So according to the Firearm blog, uh, <clears throat> Land World Inc. is taking pre-orders if you want a, you know, to get the stock. Um, maybe before Christmas, we're not quite sure if that timeline is going to work out. Um, i looking for it on, the web, on their website and I didn't see it yet, so... I don't know if it's somewhere hidden. If I can find that link for pre-order, I'll post it in the show notes. Um, but if you just go to landworldinc.com, that's L-A-N worldinc.com, that's where you can keep an eye out for that update. They, they got magazines. They make a pretty interesting 1911 like uh, stock kind of thing, make it look like a Ronin or something like that. Um, I just think this would be really cool. I think that a lot of people are going to, maybe look into SBRs now. Hopefully we can uh, lighten some of the restrictions on that with the new uh, uh, elected president in the office because um, it still kind of sucks that, you know, a short barrel rifle has so many red, red tape on it when it's really no more effective than a long barrel. And, you know, we're not really worried about people carrying it under trench coats any longer because they, they don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the last guys that wore a trench coat, well, they took care of that problem themselves. Yeah. I mean, if you see a guy in a trench coat, like, he's already ready, raising red flags as it is. Especially <laughs> if, it's, if it's summertime. Yeah, unless it's Inspector Gadget. <laughs> unless yeah. it's Inspector mm -hmm. Gadget, I suggest you queue up and get your hand on your stock and get ready to just open up on this guy. Um, yeah. yeah. This looks cool. I mean, really? <clears throat> If you guys are going to come out for it and you need someone to review it, you can send it to New Jersey, Simon Says Train, and be glad to review something like this. Doing a new AR build, and I need, you know, a buttstock and a pistol grip. Because I'm yeah. not using the A2, 30 A2 ones that Brian <laughs> Why not? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to oh, hang up the around his neck. 
<laughs> JB yeah. rolled them all together and make something out of it. Because it's never been done before. <laughs> <laughs> I have Stealth Gray, OD Green, Flat Dark, Desert, whatever, Coyote Tan. Thanks, Ryan. You're awesome, dude. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> all in A2. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like the ideal barrel length uh, for the SBR uh, version of this picture they got is about seven and a half um, for that, that handguard. You'll definitely want to get that uh, that forend first and, and kind of see how long it is and then match it up with a, a good handguard. Um, and might want to start your, your build that way if you're going to go that route. But I like the footman's loop on... You know, the, and then they also, it's like almost like the, S, the Magpul SGA, SGA stock, how they have that A2 style sling loop um, yeah. on there as well. It just looks like you, if it's, it's a good excuse to build another AR 15. I'll give them that. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, oh, yeah. I, because, you know, I don't really pay much attention. Uh, in that stock, does it look like it? has like a storage compartment down at the bottom like you can take that panel off i think that's for the monopod oh, okay so yeah maybe a rail or something can go there or a monopod yeah, yeah. okay yeah, i read about that it just hey man it's the power of really good photos <laughs> that yeah. makes you just want to want this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes i don't yeah, know I if they, anybody uh, touched on it yet but it uses a uh collapsible stock buffer tube right, right? No, instead of an a2 rifle receiver length. extension yeah right hmm. which nobody has anymore i got them yeah, i got <laughs> well, i got one of each you never know <laughs> and even with even with the ford handguard it seemed well they have pictures of the what is it the magpul uh d60 drum mm -hmm. you should be able to fix fit on here that's just well i'm just jealous really over the whole thing because i can't even have it it's probably illegal for me to look at the picture <laughs> <laughs> you, jersey laws you, you can come visit and play with mine tony yeah it really could you rephrase that sentence please no no Thank no. You. <laughs> you come to my house and touch it <laughs> Great. wow Sad okay. part is, <clears throat> i'd do it too wow. <laughs> <laughs> sweet so yeah, that's that's pretty much what we wanted to talk about this week. Those two things, um, I will I'll probably as soon as I see something more because I'll, I'll be checking on it like weekly to see if there's any any forward progress on this. I'll post. I'll let you guys know in a podcast. <clears throat> cool stuff. Uh, so let's see what else. That's that's it for the uh, the new products this week. I, I was going to talk about the uh, Magpul D60. They have a um, a pouch for it now. Um, but I'll just move that to next week's show. Maybe we'll make next week with just like an all Magpul show before Christmas. As a yeah, gift another all Magpul show. Yay! Yeah, just uh -huh. kidding. I'm not going to put you through that. It's going to be Ryan's an all high point 14 show. 14 hour Magpul <laughs> marathon. <laughs> it'll be so long. Just, it'll, just, it'll make... now, the uh, the Gun and Gear Review podcast is now being sponsored by Magpul. I wish. The only thing is, we're not getting a cut of his uh, the profits Ryan's making. He's <laughs> just uh, pocketing the money. There is no He's money. They just send him stuff. He has a twenty seventeen Magpul calendar. I do. I do need to get one of those. Uh, <laughs> the uh, Midway, Midway USA all Magpul products are fifteen percent off right now. Just, just saying. I, just I haven't saying. looked for anything. You know, I hear if you buy buy Magpul products from Black Bag Resources, you can get ten dollars off a purchase of fifty. I don't sell Magpul. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> See, but if you want some cool hex mag stuff, yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so we got uh, <laughs> we don't got any listener feedback this week, and uh, so we're gonna get the get Tony his uh, five seconds of of plug. <laughs> All right. Uh, second is for everyone.com or diversityshoot.com. Go to it, check it out, donate some stuff so I can buy, purchase more stuff for Black Friday. Uh, if you want, contact Sean over at Black Bag Resources to purchase some stuff. February 2nd is the next diversity shoot at Gun for Higher Range. I've been working on going into Pennsylvania. We're pretty close to getting that. And also working on going to Maryland and South Jersey. 
So 2017 is going to be really busy. Um, and I'm trying to get out every month to do a diversity shoot in another part of the state. 2017, we're going to have a gubernatorial race. Chunk is no longer going to be the governor here. And the Democrats uh, have gotten, well, pretty much it's anti-gun and anti-gun gun, anti-gunner, gunner. It's just, they're going to have a contest on the Democratic Party to see who hates guns more to be the next governor. So I need all the help I can get to host these shows, <clears throat> host these events, and get more people who don't even care about firearms to care about firearms by coming out to diversity shoots. And you can help me out by going to diversityshoot.com and hitting the donate button. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you very much for the time <clears throat> every week to talk about this and um, try to make things happen. Yeah, no problem. Nice. Uh, so that said, going to wrap up the show there. So uh, send questions or comments to gungearreview at gmail.com. Remember to subscribe and leave us an iTunes review. Check out all the other shows on the Firearms Radio Network at firearmsradio.tv. And be sure to visit the Firearms Insider for reviews and industry coverage. So thanks, guys, for coming on the show this week. I really appreciate it. Thanks, yeah, for, having thanks for having us. Yeah, it's always fun. My pleasure. And I will catch you guys on the next episode. So everyone shoot safe. Have a good week. And as we always like to close the show, bye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia. <laughs>